Okay. Superposition with LT Spice. The circuit I'm going to do today is got two voltage sources. One of them is a DC source. One of them is an AC source. And I want to do a transient analysis to show the actual waveform. So I've got two resistors. One thing I've noticed about SPICE is sometimes the resistors actually seem to have a polarity and it's not clear which one's which. So I am connecting my dots at this point, put in the values. Goop. I need a ground and as is always my case I like to label my nodes it makes reading the analysis a little easier so node 1 um, escape node 2 escape and node 3 center with the space bar node 3 anytime you lose it just hit the space bar it recenters okay now I'm going to go in and put in values uh, R1, R2, and R3 are okay for values I can make them whatever I want the fact that I labeled nodes is, is huge so I want a DC source so let's do 10 volts, let's do 12 volts. I don't want to be anything like one of the problems I assigned. The circuit's similar, but the, but the values I want to be different. So this resistor, let's make it uh, 4K. And 6K. Five K. Whoops. Five K. Now this one, I need it to be a sine wave. So I have to go into the advanced tab, and I have to tell it I want a sine wave. And then it will ask me for DC offset, amplitude, frequency, and cycles. I'm going to leave the DC offset as zero or blank. My amplitude I want to be 17 volts because the RMS of a 17 volt signal is 12 so I basically got an AC over here it's going to be an RMS of 12 and a DC over here with a 12 volt value. I um, want 50 hertz uh, 50 hertz gives me a 20 millisecond um, period and let's do uh, five periods or five cycles of the waveform that's all I need and now I want to graph the answer so it basically put it out there I can't see it unless I hit that hit it but there's that describes my sine wave for this um, voltage source and then just DC 12 here describes this one if I just do DC analysis it's going to ignore this and then I'll get the DC analysis of it if I do the AC analysis we'll see what it does let's see what it does ultimately I want to do transient but I'll start with DC so simulate, edit, and just do a DC operating point. Click OK. And where'd it go? 
Did it not simulate edit? Click OK. Did I click OK or did I click cancel? It won't let me do DC operating point with the sine wave in there. Now, next question. Will it let me do AC analysis? Maybe. Probably not because I'm not using an AC. So when I went to the sine wave, I required myself to do transient. But let's see. Let's see what it does. And 50. And OK. Oh, it will let me do 50. So let's see what I get if I run it. And I've got nothing. Nothing when I do the AC waveform. Uh, no AC stimulus found. So it was looking for an AC source, small signal source of of 12 volts or something in order to do the analysis. It does not recognize the sine wave. Okay. So I can cut that because it's going to make me do transient. And I could do dot op. It's really... Which really uh, is strange. That's okay. Oh, there's my dot op. So it will let me do dot op. And if I run the dot op, then basically I think it's ignoring the voltage source. Yes, it's counting 3 to 0 as 0 volts. So it's ignoring this as a voltage source. So I've got 12, 4.86, and 0. And then it's showing me the currents. So it did do DC operating point, and it showed up up here in my circuit somewhere. Let's move it down. OK. But I don't want to do that. I want to do transient, because I want to be able to see what I would see if I used an oscilloscope. So we're going to do transient which is the default. I want to look at three total cycles. So I want my stop time to be 80 milliseconds. That should give me three cycles if I start at 20 milliseconds. And my time per step will be one-tenth of a cycle or two milliseconds. And then I should see about three waveforms. And it put it somewhere because it, when I clicked, the dot op went away. So where did it put it? It put it way over there. Okay. So I'm going to put the transient right there. Hit that so we can see it as big as possible. And now I'm going to simulate. Now when you simulate a transient analysis, you get your oscilloscope basically you have the time. Now I'm simulating from 20 to 80 milliseconds but when it starts at 20 that 20 becomes a zero and my n becomes 60. So I am simulating 60 milliseconds worth of waveforms. If I look at point number one I should see 12 volts and I should see 12 volts DC and it's a flat line so DC DC sources will show up as a flat line if I look at the AC signal I will see 17 volts AC which will have an RMS of 12 so you can sort of see the AC and the DC all mixed together and then the really the point of interest is what do you see at position number two and what you see is a um, mixed signal, if you will. So, um, I think I 
Oh. <laughs> you see the you see the combination of the circle. So it's not one versus another. It is an offset value of the combination of these two. So if I do DC operating analysis, I think we had four volts here, or almost five. So it's somewhere around five volts the middle of this waveform. And it appears to be, so that's the DC level of the middle. And then I will get a little bit of a spike that will correspond with the spike of the AC that is coming from this side. And I don't know what the AC analysis is, but I can then go in and calculate it. If I get rid of the big one, and I get rid of the little, the next one, then I get a better idea of my peak to peak and my RMS. So my peak to peak is going basically from minus a half a volt all the way up to 10 volts, 10 and a half volts. We'll say it's 10 volts peak to peak. It's the sine wave, so half that would be 5. So I got about a 3.5 volt sine wave riding a DC level or the center line of this, which is... Um, it looks like 5 volts, just under 4.96. So I've got a 5 volt DC waveform with a 3 volt RMS peak on top of it. In terms of currents, I can go down here and click on the currents flowing through. And my current will follow my voltage. that current should follow my voltage but be less and then my 6 amp current is there so let's get rid of IR1 and IR2 so cut them because we don't care we just want to see those so there's my current and voltage for the 6k resistor and what you can see is that it is following the voltage very nicely as it would now when I did the current my current scale is on this side my voltage scale is on this side and that's superposition if I want to do it traditionally the way the it's taught I'm going to close this window, maximize this window, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, close this, and I have to replace it with a short, and then I have to do dot op analysis on it. So the nice thing is transient, I go away. Cancel. Oh, you know what? I can I can just do it this way. Simulate, edit, choose dot op. Get rid of everything in front of it. Click OK. And what you notice is my dot op went back to the desk to the period my transient now has, so I will get my um, DC operating points. It's 4.86. So this is the value of my DC. And then to do the AC, I'd get rid of the DC and put it in. Can't modify the circuit, and I don't have my my Libra Office open yet. <laughs> There we go. I just want a new writer file. And control V. 
There we go. There's my DC values. Now I go back to my spice circuit. Um, spice circuit. I can close this window so it can do something. I can put my voltage source back, except I will do it as AC analysis. And I'm going to do advanced. I'm going to do it as an amplitude. Now, when you do an amplitude, you get an amplitude. So if you do an RMS, you get an RMS. So on small signal or independent voltage, I'm doing 12 as my RMS. Now, this one I'm going to cut. Join them. Okay. I got to go in and do the analysis. Edit. I'm going to use AC analysis. I want one frequency. You can do multiple, but you can, if you choose list, you can do one. And I'm going to do 50. And so. Now my active analysis is this AC list because of the dot. And I click enter and here we go. So my AC analysis. Is this part. Okay. So if I look at IR3. I see my currents. Now, when I did the DC part, the 4.86 was my DC level. And when I did it as AC, my AC level was about 3.89, so 4 volts peak. So I had this much DC with this much AC riding on it. So let's close that. And if I edit undo, I wonder how far back I can go. So let's just keep doing it, see what I get. F9, 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 F9. Okay, so I just undid everything back to what we initially did. And my transient analysis is already set up right. So if I run it and look at that point, do I have my DC level at about the 5 volt mark? And is my AC level um, let's look at that. My AC level says it should be about 4 volts. That's RMS, 3.89. And if I divide 3.89 by 0.7, what do I get? Um, a little over 5. I get a little over 5 volts. And that's what you see. I'm getting a little over 5 volts in my swings, peak to peak. So, here's the DC part figured with operating point. Here's the AC part figuring with operating analysis, with AC analysis. And I did a magnitude of 12, and I got RMS of 3. If I had done 17, I would have got the right thing. I would have got the right number. I wouldn't have to do the conversion. And then when I do it in as a transient, I actually see the waveform and I can pick from the waveform those values, those two values, and it's combined. So that's where we want to be. And I thank you for watching.